T Cozy here, and you're watching another round of With Just 15 Defeats, the heavyweight boxing show from the UK. Today's show, I'm going to be discussing the EBU heavyweight title fight coming up in May between Derek Chisora and Kubarat Pulev. Should be a really interesting fight. Not discuss these two in much depth previously on the show, um, but we did discuss Derek in the UK roundup earlier on in the year. If you want to check that one out on my channel, please remember to subscribe when you're there. So, this fight has been announced and it's been penciled in for the 7th of May this year. To be held in Hamburg. Okay, so Derek Chisora and Pulev, they've both held this title in the past, I believe, um, some years back. I believe uh, Pulev has defended it. I'm not sure whether Derek managed to defend it or not. Let's just have a quick check. Uh, or whether he. He, no, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We know that he fought for it against Hellenius when I think most people can accept that <laughs> he won that fight. From, from my money, he won it fairly comfortably, but was not given decision out in Helsinki. So he's fought for it. Uh, against Gerber, easy victory. He then lost it when he fought Fury. So anyway, this matchup is coming up shortly, and it's going to be a defining matchup, a defining match for Derek Chisora. We've discussed him in the past, as I previously said. I am a fan of Del Boy. I like him. He comes across as such a good guy. And I don't know whether that's gone against him. And I have mentioned this in the past. That when he broke onto the scene, he came across this whole bad boy image. It was some sort of gangster. He had the whole mask. Um, <laughs> he looked like a badass. But as time's gone on, we've kind of seen the real Del Boy. He's just a regular guy. He's a nice guy. Um, he's not a murderous killer, which is what you need to be to be a world heavyweight champion. Now, just uh, talking about Delby there, whilst we're there. In his last five fights, he's fought literally no one. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce some of these guys' names, but none of them have particularly good records. Um realistically they were but he had four in 2015 and he's had an early one in 2016 all fights he was expected to win one of them went the distance which was 10 rounds and i believe that he was particularly disappointed about that um and i think he felt that he'd he'd let himself down with his performance really because the the level of the opponent was pretty shocking uh, and to go 10 rounds just shows you um, the level of performance. But but one fight before that, that was the Tyson Fury 2 match. This was the, this was the, the fight where the public realised that Tyson Fury was the real deal. Prior to that, I believe, my opinion, was that most people's opinion was that Tyson Fury was a bit of a joke... And he was never going to be good enough. And then he got in the ring with Chizura for the second time. And not only did he beat him for the second time, he absolutely destroyed him. He broke him down systematically and finished him. It was embarrassing for Del Boy, And it was one-sided. And it was, it was painful to watch. It was painful to watch, okay? So, he's basically been... Trying to rebuild his career since um, he's had these five meaningless fights, just um, 
buying time fights. Um, he's changed promoters. Um, he's no longer with uh, Frank Warren. Is that good? Is that bad? Who who knows? Who knows um, how that's going to affect his career moving forward? But he's got this massive fight. They've managed to um, sign the fight against Pulev. Now, who is Pulev? Pulev is another guy who has a respectable record. There are a lot of Pulevs out there in the heavyweight division at this moment in time. 23 fights. 23 fights with 22 wins. So that means he's got one defeat. Who is that one defeat against? I'm sure you can guess, even if you don't know. It's Vladimir Klitschko. And that was a stoppage. It's quite an interesting fight. A few knockdowns, and then uh, it was it was it was uh, it was knock knockout time. But to some degree, we we've expected it over the past that even guys that are relatively decent they come up against uh, Klitschko and his size um, and skill set was able to neutralize pretty much anyone um, but what I will say about Pulev is that he does have a few interesting victims on his CV that kind of pull him out from the crowd um, and these all came 2012 to 2013. It was a three-fight run where he beat Dimitrenko, Ustinov, and Thompson. Now, a lot of people will say, so what? Those guys, those guys are nothings. But those three guys are also contenders themselves. Thompson's been in numerous world title fights. He's in, been in numerous... Sorry. Been in numerous big, big fights. And he's a game old son of a bitch. Okay, so to go the distance and beat him uh, pretty convincingly, that's good to have on your CV. Alexander Ustinov, that big lump, who I've always thought was an interesting opponent, and I, I can't believe that more Brits. Fury, I know Fury had a fight lined up against him, which would have been quite an interesting one. But the fact that I know that they're rushing Joshua and, and Co, but Usinov would have been a brilliant opponent uh, for Anthony Joshua as a fight, a learning fight um, this year. Um, I, I thought this year that would have been a brilliant fight for him. Didn't happen. But anyway, Pulev stopped him late on in the fight. Um, Dimitrenko again in uh, deep water. He got the KO in the 11th round. And Dimitrenko, another sizable guy. Another sizable guy. He managed to get the better of those two guys. So, so those three opponents, they're three very good victories on his CV, which are what obviously um, won him the opportunity to fight Klitschko for that title back in 2014, where he was unsuccessful. Um, so... He he's a decent enough guy. He's uh he's a he looks like a badass. He, there's something about him. His face is is weathered uh, to be uh, kind to him, and he looks like one of these guys that could be like a movie villain. You can imagine him in his white suit and a <laughs> and a machine gun. He just has that aura. Um, I reckon he's really imposing in real life. If you met him, uh, yeah, he's a he's a bad dude. But but he, he's a relatively big guy. He's six foot four and a half. That is a big guy. Um, weight. Uh, he he's around about the two fifty mark. So he's 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 a big guy, and he's got experience. He's got 147 rounds, so he's in these 23 fights. He's had quite a few rounds. As we said, his, his knockout percentage is relatively low uh, for a heavyweight, only 12. Only 12 KOs, so not fantastic, but I think he does have power. Um, most heavyweights do have power, and uh, I think that this is going to mesh to be quite an interesting 
quite an interesting fight. I, I, I just think it's going to be a really interesting fight. We know that Del Boy, well, let, let's be let's be perfectly one hundred percent honest at this point. It all depends on what Del Boy turns up. Is he going to be in shape? Is he going to be motivated? Because an in shape, motivated uh, Chisora can be a very, very difficult opponent to work out. Um, and I think that if we do have that motivated game um, in shape, um, Chisora, we're going to see the best one because we know that he's a busy, he's he's jerky. Um, he's bobbing, he likes to get in close, he puts his head forward, um, throwing punches, and that will be a difficult opponent for Pulev to work out. If it's the slow, cumbersome, uh, hands-down Chisora that we've seen in a couple of those fights, Pulev will win this fight comfortably, and I wouldn't be surprised if Pulev wins by stoppage. But as I say, if we have the game Chisora... This could actually be a bit of a war. I think both it could they could end up in deep water, um, and trying to just trying to find those reserves of strength to 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 push both of them over the line, either of them. Um, and if that's the case, I think that Chizora can win this fight because Chizora has a wealth of experience. For I don't think there's another heavyweight boxer in the division with the sort of experience that Chisora comes with without having any real success, if you understand what I'm getting at. Because we know that yes, we said that he's won he's won belts, most guys win belts, they get thrown all over the place. But the the level of competition that Chisora has been in with is high. Tyson Fury twice as world heavyweight champion. Tyson Fury has been in the ring with him twice. One went the distance and he was in terrible shape. He was in terrible shape, but he still went the distance the first time on Tyson Fury. The second time he was completely exposed and embarrassed. Okay. Now, off the back of the first Tyson Fury fight, now I've discussed this over and over time where there was a series of fights that he was rewarded, rewarded with on the back of terrible, terrible uh, off of defeats. So we had the Tyson Fury fight. Off the back of that, he got a European uh, heavyweight title fight against Hellenius. He won that fight. He won that fight, but he was not given the decision. He was not given the decision. Now, I'm just checking it again, and... I'm looking at it, and they're saying it's a split decision. Absolutely. Those two judges, uh, they should never be allowed to judge a fight again. But anyway, and I think basically off the back of that, he then got a world title fight three months later, three to two, three months later, against Vitaly Klitschko, the great, the legend Vitaly. Um, he got that title fight, and again, he went... The distance, but Vitaly schooled him. He schooled him. Um, but I remember watching this fight and thinking, Vitaly's winning every single round, but Chisora's in it. Chisora's in it. Like Vitaly's winning the rounds, but it's not. They're not actually. They're not one-sided rounds. They're not one-sided rounds. Um, but Vitaly's just winning them. So. He off the back, so he had he came off of that fight with a real um, some pride and, and the fact that he'd put in a fantastic performance. And, and I was thinking, I would not be surprised if he got Vladimir off the back of that because they, they they know what Chizura can, Chizura can do, um, they'd be confident of beating him again. Um, it didn't quite happen because of that whole fiasco with David Hay and the presser, um, which then led to the uh, David Hay Chizura fight um now i still believe that the whole david hay chisora fight at the presser was staged i may be wrong but that's what i believe um and it obviously made quite a bit of money 
I remember I actually went and watched this fight with one of my pals at the cinema. So they're actually televising this fight at the cinema. There you go. Um, but anyway, so since then, <laughs> he has fought a mixed bag of opponents. Um, and really, it's just the Tyson Fury fight that stands out, which he was comfortably beaten in. So let's just quickly, quickly compare the differentials in size. So Derek Chisora, 6'1", with a reach of 74. Pulev, taller, 6'4", doesn't have his reach on his website, which is a bit annoying. But um, so as we said, Pulev is around about the 250 mark, give or take, whereas Chisora could be anything from 230 to 260, depending on uh, the sort of shape that he comes in. Um, ironically, he came in uh, 241 against Tyson Fury in the second fight, and he'd previously fought Kevin Johnson at 238. Um, so... <laughs> You don't know, but he seems to be around about the 250 mark. He's obviously smaller. Um, they're going to weigh him about the same. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting fight, as I've said. Um, it all depends on what versions of these guys come to the, to the ring. But if we're talking about 100% um, guys on both sides, my money goes with Chisora, and. I think Chisora wouldn't be going into this fight if he didn't believe that he still had an opportunity to win a title. I think he still thinks that he can become a champion. I think he still has the potential to become a champion in the current heavyweight landscape. There is opportunities for people to become world champions that don't deserve to be world champions. Now, I believe that this is an EBU heavyweight title shot, but it's also an eliminator to become the contender for the IBF uh, or or one of the contenders. You know, it's ridiculous how many different things that crop up to become mandatories. It's a joke when <laughs> the voluntary is... And we, we know, we don't need to discuss that. But anyway, I believe that he may... The winner of this match may become the number two contender and the mandatory in line to fight after another mandatory is announced. So... It, it puts whoever wins this fight back into the world title scene. The world title picture. So, let's wait and see on that fight. It's coming up in May, May the 7th. And thanks for watching this round.